All right, you ready? Ready. We're back. We're out of YouTube jail. Yes. We weren't in the YouTube jail. No. We were busy. We had real life. Deal with it. Or don't. I'm not. I'm, I'm guaranteed nobody was really sad. But. Except for my wife who kept hounding me. Yeah, you, you need to get with Fred. You guys need to keep on, on doing it. Well, it's good that we have your wife's support. Because if she didn't want you to do this, this would be much harder. It's probably to free up her Saturday. <laughs> um, episode 19. Welcome back. Elders Rising. It has been a banger of a first month of the year. It's been <laughs> wonderful. Actually, there's been some really good stuff that's happened. Quay Quay has got shit on 21. Do we want to talk about... Do we want to talk about... Uh, like... I'm more interested in what I just told you about, in what I read in the scriptures, than I am in, like, GameStop and all the fancy stuff. Which, we can talk about all that. There's I don't a ton really of care stuff. about GameStop. I know, I, I know and understand the impl- implications of it. And if you have a 401k or anything like that, yeah, it hurts you. Here's- Potentially. IERA made back all the money that it dropped me in my 401k, so... Here- and I'm far enough away from retirement, it doesn't matter. Here's the thing that I see is such a big implementation, impl- implication. It has nothing to do with the money of like, oh, gaining him, you know. It has 100% to do with how visible it made it to the normie, the regular person who doesn't want to be involved in politics, doesn't want to be involved in the government. It made it so obvious to them that there's there people can play by different rules. And in this case, in GameStop's case, the hedge funds can make different rules. They, they short sell a stock... Which is stupid as you like. I don't know. The, the stock market itself is a game of chance, and that's. I mean, that's. It's. It's. It is what you get. But the it made it so obvious to the general person that there are that if you have the money, you can change the rules. Which means why why buy into the system? I, there's one guy that I manage that he was really really bothered by the whole GameStop thing, and he was like he was really for several days it shook him up good and he was just like he finally realized the thing that bothered him so much was they just changed the rules it's like oh we're supposed to buy into the system of like oh you buy stocks or even buy mutual funds or whatever you know it, it, we're investing and it's that's how it's it's sold to us it's like oh we're investing but it's like no that's not actually true we're playing a system and we don't get to know the rules for the system and when we actually do win in the system the rules get changed so that we become losers. And it's like, well, if you know what it is, it doesn't bother you. But he, the thing that gave him comfort that he finally realized was it's outside of my realm of control. And he didn't have personal money in GameStop stock, I don't think. But it was just the idea that the system is so rigged what really shook him. And he's like, okay, it's out of my realm, my, my, influ- my sphere of influence. I, I no longer control that. And that's what I told him. I was like, that's exactly right. And, and I told him why I, why I purchased land and why I'm trying to get it so we can raise our own food and have our own – like we can take care of ourselves outside of the whole system is because you have to increase your sphere of influence so that you can protect your family and so you can do those things. And that's that's the only reason that I'm happy about it. I, I, I think it was a great thing because it, it woke people up to the institutions. There's a book called The Fourth Turning and it talks about just the cycles that we go through as a – as a nation, and it's, it was a, written by some historians, but we're in a cycle right now where the common people don't trust the institutions because the institutions have been corrupted. All of our institutions, and that's the, and and what happens, what's going to happen next is we're going to either a new institution's going to rise up and uh, supposedly save us from the old institutions, or we're gonna we're gonna balkanize into like there's so many things that could happen, but it's it's the problem, the core problem. You see it in the voting. You see it in the financials, you see it in pharma, you see it in so many different industries, is we no longer trust as a people. We don't trust our institutions. You see it in the media. I mean, and, and we shouldn't trust our institutions because they've, they've proven themselves to be not trustworthy. And so I think it was a great thing. Like, I, I don't know, not that I not that I want people to suffer and want people to lose their money and that kind of stuff, but it's just like, that's 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 the reality of it, is we're, it's making people realize that our institutions are corrupted. 
On the subject of stocks and the market and such and whatnot, how about Nancy Pelosi sinking a million dollars into Tesla stock the day before Joe Biden says that they're going to change the whole U.S. fleet to electric vehicles, which isn't going to happen. <laughs> how about that? Insider trading. That's been going on for a long time. Well, yeah. Just one more one more illustration. If you haven't realized it yet, the the elites and the aristocrats, the people who think that the they aristocrats, rule over us. The aristocrats, yeah. People who think that they rule over us. Thomas O'Malley. They... They live by a different rule, and they, they make their own rules. And so if you think that we're, we're living – that's that's the downfall of our republic is n- – the, the whole saving grace of the republic is everyone is supposed to be upheld into the law. Sorry, I'm crying because of the smoke. Everyone's supposed to be upheld sure. into the law. Sure. Oh, it's so touching. <laughs> but because they're making their own rules and not holding each other accountable, the common people are seeing that – it's the the institutions are corrupt. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of go off. I'm not sorry about that though. You know what my favorite takeaway in the last month has been? What? AOC talking about how she almost died and how scared she was and she was down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was such a great... I, so It's precious. I was in the same building that you were. They weren't even here. <laughs> it's so precious. It's like, I, it's somebody it's coming precious. to save her. It's like, I did not know what that person wanted. He oh, yelled man. at me. Well, yeah, it's called high stress. Oh, I thought man. it was funny. That's so funny. It made me giggle. Yeah, but let's, let's touch on that for a second. So... A bunch of people broke into the Capitol. It's not the first time it's happened. Probably won't be the last time. But the last time that people forced their way into the Capitol was during the Kavanaugh hearings, I believe. And nobody said anything, and nobody did anything. Well, it wasn't politically uh, useful at that point. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so I had conversations with some guys at work, and they're like, how do you feel about it? I said, why do I give a shit? <laughs> like, what do, you, what do you mean? You were in the army. I'm like, yeah, I was in the army. Why do you think I hate the government so bad? <laughs> like, let me tell you this. I'm not a part of it. Don't plan on being a, any part of any of this kind of nonsense. I'm not going to do anything until my hand is forced and I have to do something. But if they broke in, stole everything out of there, and torched it, I wouldn't care. I really don't. It's not a private business. It belongs to the people. And, I mean, honestly, what do you expect when you underrepresent and unrepresent a significant portion of the population? What the hell did you expect to happen? And at no point in this or after did they stop, take a step back and say, maybe we're the problem. <laughs> it's all, oh no, these are, this is insurrection. Well,. You do realize that it was insurrection. <laughs> this country was born out of insurrection. If you want a good laugh, go ahead and look up. I'm sure it's on YouTube or BitChute or something like that. Look up the points where they, the, the, the clips where they have reporter after reporter after politician after politician calling it an erection. It's great. It was called an erection so many times. It was like this is erection. I mean insurrection. Like this is an this is an erection. That's, that's what they say, and it's just like, these people's uh, minds are so gone. Nope. Nope. It, it's not an erection. When I was little, I heard the term political, when I said little, like high school and stuff, I heard the term political theater. If you don't, if you haven't caught on, anything that happens in politics is, it's, it's like Hollywood, but with worse acting. <laughs> Well, nothing, nothing at that level happens by chance. I don't believe in, I forgot the word. Erection? Uh, <laughs> uh, coincidence. I don't believe in political coincidence. I mean, for like, if you and I, for example, ran into each other in a Walmart 
in Missouri be like, hey, isn't this a coincidence? Yeah, that happens, but like a political <laughs> coincidence? No, that shit don't happen. And then, so how, how do they react? They activate 25,000 National Guard, which is two brigades with, worth of people, which, fun fact, was more people than we had in Ramadi and Fallujah when I was over there. Just to put this in perspective, Canada, the whole, what, uh, eastern half of Canada is, there's, I think, 38,000. So we, the people that went to D.C. were literally a, a large enough force to invade half of Canada. Like, a crazy number of people. And, and I've heard of people, I've, I've heard of people doing videos and stuff right now. D.C. is like a ghost town. Have you heard of that? Well, not only did they pull these guys away from their families, their, you know, everyday normal life, their jobs, and everything like that, and ask them to possibly, you know, violate their oath. I had a, I had some friends who were over there, and I asked one of my buddies, I said, how many rounds did they give you? He says, they gave us four magazines, which is 120 rounds. And I had a real big problem with that because every single one of those rounds is meant to defend the people of the United States against our enemies. And those rounds were specifically for American citizens. Red, blue, I don't care. That's not acceptable. That's not okay. But, so, anyway, you pull these guys away from their lives and ask them to possibly violate their oaths to protect you. And then you realize, wait, the majority... Of the military is conservative. Have you heard of? We that? better put a. We better vet all twenty-five thousand of these people to check where their loyalties lie. Are you kidding me? Why do you think that we hate you? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I posted a big long rant on Facebook about it. And, you know, I said this. This is what you subjected my generation of veterans to, and this is what you're asking this generation to go through. And you've ignored us, you've abused us, and all this other stuff, and, you know, saying why it's no surprise that we lost 22 veterans a day to suicide for so long. And I said, it's going to be worse for this generation once they realize how they were played and used against the American people if something happens, which nothing did. But it's like, our loyalty is not to you. Loyalty doesn't really exist to the Army either. Because it doesn't take long to figure out, hey, we're really on our own. So, loyalty, as far as being in the military, is to each other. And, you know, well, to a lot of guys, it's to the Constitution who understand their oath that they've sworn. But, that's the thing that the politicians don't understand about loyalty. And to us, loyalty is everything. And so, when we're betrayed, we remember... And you keep pushing buttons, and you keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Eventually, that betrayal is going to come full circle. You keep pissing off the wrong people. <laughs> the um, the vet vetting that they did of the when they were vetting the white nationalists or whatever in the army and stuff like that. There was a post that I read about, um, and I'm and I'm still learning like Roman history, but I know the Visigoths sacked Rome. They sacked Rome, I think it was like 42 years after they were given, they, so they were refugees um, running from the, uh, they're basically refugees into Rome. Then they, they became, Rome accepted them in as refugees. Within 40 years, they had, around like 40 years after that, they sacked Rome. And the guy that sacked, sacked Rome was like, Al, I, forget, I forget his name, he, he was a... Al Sharpton. He, no, not Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton. No. Rick James. Stop it. You're you're embarrassing not just you but me. <laughs> so he uh, <laughs> he he was a general of the Roman M army. He was a general of the Roman army, and he's one of the ones that sacked Rome. He was um, some the the goth. Al, Al, George Patton. Alec Alec the goth or something like that. But before he Alec was Gordon. considered the goth, he was a he was a Roman legionnaire or Roman. I don't remember. I don't know the structure, so I don't know exactly how it sits. But he was a um, he was one of the leaders in the Roman 
uh, army. And so it's like the government is trying to weed out white nationalists and the, the political um, identity of anybody who's considered a white nationalist is anybody who does not want to cut their own kids' dicks off. Like that's – everybody's a white nationalist nowadays. It's like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's not something that you, you – it's it's just if you are if you are if you don't think that you should wear a mask you're a white nationalist if you don't think that you should take vaccines you're a white nationalist if you don't think that you should um i don't know give me an example want to be left alone if you want to have if you want to have your have weapons you're a white nationalist if you defend the Consti- uh, the, the second amendment white nationalist like there's so many there's so many cases of um, these white nationalists, it's, it means nothing. It literally means nothing. It's a lazy argument. Oh, absolutely. The whole point of it is to get people to change how and what they believe because of a perception, not wanting to be perceived as being a certain way. And that's what it's all about because it's worked for a lot of people for so long. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want to look like I'm a racist, so I better not say or do that. I don't want to be a misogynist. I don't want to be a, you know, insert whatever, whatever the popular political argument is. Thing. Yeah. Like we said earlier, there, there was a, a true statesman is not one that follows the popular um, culture. It's one who follows good culture, the, the right thing to do, and helps make that become popular. That's what a statesman is. I've been pushing a lot of the guys that I deployed with mm-hmm. to run for for office. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Good. Because at this point, you know, I think we all know this, but the system's not going to fix itself. And we still have we still have some options before we resort to force. But my thing with them is I'm like, look, we have principles. We have morals. We believe in the Constitution. If if we are able to achieve our goals of getting people into office, the right type of people, who aren't interested in playing the game, who aren't interested in, in the money and power, just want to do the right thing and preserve the Constitution, we can do that. But we, we have to take control of it because the GOP is not going to fix itself. GOP has no pressure. Here in Utah, no. GOP has no pressure to do the right thing. No. And so that gives us the option to either have some of us run as Republicans to try and bring those ideals and principles back to the party, which I think is a lost cause and not going to happen, or have the rise of the third party in Utah. Because the GOP... The G- Utah GOP is corrupt and unopposed, and it's a perfect example of how when you leave the Republicans alone long enough, and they're unopposed, that they're every bit as bad. Look at this legislative se- session. This legis- the secret legislative session? Yeah. Where they take seven minutes to pass bills that f- allow that, that subvert the uh, HEPA laws and constitutional uh Rights to of privacy. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's what is it? One seventeen. Yeah. Uh, motion yeah. one seventeen in this legislative House uh, bill. session. Yeah, I think it was one seventeen. I'd have to look it up, and I don't want to right now. But basically, it says that they're not going to. The state won't require you to have proof of vaccination, but a private business can. So they, they have this big, long bill, and right in the middle of it, they hide two lines that's the heart of this bill, saying that, like, Costco or, you know, Delta or whoever can require you to prove that you are that you are vaccinated or whatever. Uh, to, to be clear, at the very beginning, it says, oh, they can't use, so Utah has a database of vaccinations, and they can't use this database of vaccinations from Utah, but... It's, it's illegal for them to require that proof from that database. But if there's proof from some other source, they can require that. So you can have they can, so businesses and even the the state can require proof of vaccination through other sources, just not this this one source. 
And so they made it sound like, no, we're, we're making, gonna protect yeah, your privacy. We're gonna, you're gonna protect your privacy. And then it's like, no, whoa, reverse card, Uno reverse. <laughs> Do the right thing or draw twenty five. <laughs> Twenty five all day, but it's well. And then they did the same thing that they did in DC. They activated the guard and the police, and then they have they wouldn't let people into yeah. Into so the, you have these guys who swore an oath to defend the Constitution and defend we the people, but. If you go and you try to force your way in there to represent yourself and your beliefs and, so and you just interact... just hold the people there accountable. Yeah, like we're supposed to be able to do, because we don't do secret meetings in this nation. Exactly. Then these these Can't guard worry. guys or the cops will shoot you in the face. Yeah. So, I mean, good job with the Utah GOP. Yeah, they're real stand-up straight guys and... Because, you know, sunlight's always the best disinfectant. Yeah. Well, and the problem is, especially, like, with members in the church, and you and I talked about this earlier today, mm-hmm. was so many members have their heads buried in the sand because, you know, our neighbors are our representatives on the state level. And it's like, oh, yeah, I know they're him. They're a good guy. They're a good guy. And they've got the right letter. Or colored next to their name, so... They must be have my interest. Yeah. They're a Mormon and I'm a Mormon. They're a Republican and I'm a Republican. We must have the same ideals. And what this bill also did is it may, it gives um, it gives power to the... Or it, well, what Herbert did earlier this year, what, or last year, was he gave power to the health departments so that, oh, we're not going to force businesses to shut down, or we're not going to force this, but then they say, oh... The health departments can can send letters to businesses and say you have to ensure that nobody enters your business that doesn't have a mask on. Otherwise, we'll find you ten thousand dollars. We'll find you ten thousand dollars or or revoke your business license. It's like so the politicians are saying, oh, it's not from us, but they're giving authority to these unelected agencies to do that. And and so it's 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 a complete bait and switch. It's garbage. And for those of you who don't understand bait and switch. Uno reverse card. That's what that means. Uno reverse card. Reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what it is, is pure, unadulterated bullshit. Nobody has your best interests in mind except for yourself. And if you believe that somebody else has your best interests in mind, I don't know what to tell you. The beauty of a small government is that it doesn't matter who's in power... It doesn't have the power to go into your personal life and destroy and ruin your life. You. That's why everybody should be pushing for a small government, a government that doesn't have authority and power, including these agencies, the alphabet agencies that have no, um, no, uh, what do you call it, recourse from the citizens. They have no uh, accountability to the citizens. I just can't believe that we see all these things going on and that the state gives power and authority to the health department, which none of us have elected. And people will just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Well, that's what I gotta do now. Here's the thing. Most people who go day to day and who wear the masks and stuff, they know it's off. They know something's wrong. They don't know how to um, articulate it, and they don't know how to fight against it. So it's very important for us who who see what's going on and who understand, oh, this is a form of tyranny. We simply have to just not allow it. Remember, the Constitution itself states that, uh, was the Constitution Declaration of Independence? Anyways, our, our rights come from God. They're, they're self-evident. They're not declared to be from the government. The government does not have the authority nor the power to give you rights. God does that. And right now, our government is just, it's just pushing to see what you'll do. It's pushing to see, hey, let's try and, let's let's make a law that they can't fit with more than, they can't have Thanksgiving with more than seven people. Perfect example. Do, do you think they'll do that? Perfect. They, they don't, they don't, they have no intention of, of actually um, holding it. And, and if they do, it'll be very selective. And it, the, the vast 
likelihood of it affecting you won't be if you just don't don't live it don't don't obey don't conform perfect example of what you're saying is look at all the uh, fauci two masks is better than one <laughs> better three masks what? is better than two it's like oh my hell seriously all you're saying is shit to see how much you can get away with it's kind of like you know the those kids in high school who would like dare that the the outcast to oh go go climb up that tower see if you can get to the top. It's like you think you'll do it. <laughs> it's like no, those kids are assholes. Don't listen to them. <laughs> assholes. But seriously. <laughs> yeah, it's just that's all it's turned into. At this point anymore, it's like, well, let's see what we can say and get away with. Yeah. And we're letting them do it. Absolutely. Well, we're not. I don't wear a mask. And so <laughs> I had to have surgery last week again. And uh, Baby. <laughs> I, found, I found out something very valuable. If you're on crutches, people won't even ask you. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Uh, taking crutches everywhere. I go crutch it into a place in Salt Lake, you know, like the Gestapo headquarters. Uh-huh. Nobody said a word to me. Nobody asked me like they usually do. Excuse me, sir, do you have a mask? Everybody just left me alone. Can I help you find anything? Nope, I'm good. It's like a magical power. I should... Maybe I won't get my tendons fixed. <laughs> it's that victim status. He's on crutches. He's the victim. <laughs> yeah. But and I, I, I was expecting to go, you know, hobbling my ass in there and have somebody say something. And nobody said anything to me. Or my helper. Into the medical? <laughs> no. And they made me wear it at the hospital to go get my surgery. But the next day I had to go down to Salt Lake to do some VA stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I had time to kill between my appointments. So we went to a store that shall remain nameless. Well, we went a couple of places. It's because you bought gay stuff. No. <laughs> That's why he doesn't want to tell you, because he bought gay stuff. I don't want that gay business topic. to get in trouble, because they left me alone. Oh. <laughs> but uh, they didn't say anything to me, and they didn't say anything to my buddy, who was my helper. It was pretty awesome. Everybody just left us alone. But then again, maybe they didn't care in the first place either. There was a um, store in Southern California. There was a grocery store where they encourage people not to wear masks. Did you see that? No. They don't want people wearing masks. And you saw all these old people there. They were just shopping. No, Nobody was wearing masks. It's like everybody knows it's a farce. And, and it's. But nobody wants to be a troublemaker. Oh, I don't want to cause trouble. Or this, this is... These are the new rules, or this is the law. It's like, the legislature never passes. This isn't a law. The governor can't just stroke a pen and make law. Neither can the president. It's, I mean, he has executive orders, but that's not how they work. And everybody's like, well, this, this is the way... No, we don't have power in the executive branch. We never have. We never will. That kind of goes against the entire you know, principle of what this nation was founded, founded on. Yeah. Was to keep the power away from the executive. Because if, the executive will always abuse it. Everybody acknowledges that, oh, separation of power is a good thing because we've ah. taught that. But nobody actually understands what that means. It's like, separation of power, good, good. It's like, n n no, you realize... You, you know what that means? That, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Separation of power, separation of, separation of power. Oh, but the governor told me to do this, so I'm going to listen. Well, and I think it's funny. We've all known these people their whole lives that claim to be rebels <laughs> and, and whatnot. And you see those people wearing masks. And then they get after people like me who don't wear masks. Where's your mask? I don't have one. Don't you care about other people? Not as much as I care about myself, I'll be honest. <laughs> I care about my freedom and my children's freedom. Like, I don't make my kids wear masks when we're out and about either. Same. And, you know, most of the time nobody really cares because they don't go anywhere other than where I live. But Most people simply don't care. 
Like, that's the thing. Most people simply don't care. Some people do. Well, and they're, they're living in hell. They're scared of their own piss. Like, they're... they're. Well, you have the people say, well, if everybody would just go along with this, it will, it, it'll be over sooner. No, it won't. This has nothing to do with the virus. Not to mention, there's no scientific evidence that corroborates infection rates with the science or without crystal clear yeah i love hearing yeah. crystal clear the, the science is crystal clear there's no corroboration between wearing masks and infection rates you are absolutely a, you are a denier zero. you are a denier and a white supremacist because you don't want a diaper on your face i guess so i love it i will say this when i walked in well, I didn't walk in. I barely crutched my crippled ass into the hospital <laughs> for the surgery last week. My old left knee was all swollen up. And I think everybody on who listens, all three of them, knows that I have issues with my right ankle. So my ankle hurt like a bugger because I couldn't take ibuprofen for like four days before my surgery. And I'm pretty sure I screwed up something in my left knee from all these years of Compensating. compensating. And so my left knee's all swollen up. I can't bend it. It hurts like a son of a bitch. My ankle hurts because it's jacked up. And I go crutch it in, and I'm just hurting about as bad as I've ever hurt in my entire life. And I get in there, realize that I forgot my bandana and whatnot. And the lady that was there, you know, the little lady that welcomes you into the hospital and asks you the questions and stuff like that. I told her, I said, I forgot my mask. So she hands me one of those shitty-ass blue ones that you got to tie down here and you got to tie up here. And I'm on crutches. I can't bear my own weight without the crutches. I drop one of my crutches trying to put the damn thing on. At this point, I'm frustrated. I'm hurt and all this other stuff. And this lady, she was so super nice. She came over and picked up my crutch while I was trying to pick it up without falling over. And then she tied my, my mask on for me. <laughs> super nice. That's the thing. There's good people Super still. nice. She was really nice. And I was, even though she was putting a muzzle on me, more or less, I was super grateful for her help. But, you know, I, I don't know. She was super nice. I wish I knew her name. I wish she watched so I could say thank you, whatever your name is, but there's not a chance. Not a chance. I'll send it to her. Nobody watches it. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't know who she is. I don't know either, but she was really nice and I was very touched. And then, when I was in pre-op, in my bed, in my little gown, everything, I kept trying to take a nap, because I was super tired, because I didn't sleep the night before, because I hurt so bad, and everything, and I kept trying to take a nap, and somebody would walk in. First it was the nurse, then it was the anesthesiologist, then it was the doctor, then the anesthesiologist came in again, then the nurse came in again. And then finally the anesthesiologist came back again when I was trying to go pee to take me back to surgery. <laughs> but I will tell you, when they put me out, I was so happy. I was like, oh, sleep. And then they woke. They had the audacity to, woke, to wake me up. I, just would have I wish they would have left you out. I kind of do, too. Just kidding. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it... It was awesome. And so, anyway, the anesthesiologist is wheeling me back in the wheelchair because they don't want my crutches back there. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. they don't want to have to haul them around. So they, they, wheel, they wheel me back and whatnot. And I'm talking to the anesthesiologist. And I said, so what did you do to your ankle? So I explained to him, you know, I broke it when I was in Iraq 15 years ago, blah, blah, blah. And he says, oh, so is the VA paying for this? I said, nope. The VA told me it's not their fault even though they paid for it twice. And admitted it was their fault. And he says, are you serious? I'm like, oh yeah. I actually got to meet a congressional staffer last week, too. And he said the same thing. He's like, that's not acceptable. So when I gather the rest of my evidence and everything and go to put my stuff back in, he says, call our office. He says, I'm not going to promise you that anything get, is going to get done. But I said, look, dude, I understand how government works. You get the right letterhead or the right name behind something, and it's going. He says, exactly. So, I have an, an ally. That's awesome. What? it. Ow! <laughs> I'm very confused right now. 
I'm not sure which emotions I'm supposed to be feeling. You've always been confused. Hello, Roxy. Why do you always want to come hang out by me, huh? New friend. Uh. So we've been doing this one for 40 minutes already. Already? Yeah. I better go check the camera. Make sure it's still going. Yeah. And the, the anesthesiologist was also really happy with me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because right. they come in and says, do you have any preferences on your um, on medications and stuff like that? Because I, I told the nurse, I said that, you know, a lot of the narcotics and stuff don't work on me and morphine doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. So I asked him for um, oh, hell, I don't remember what they're called. But based, the, they're, they're not narcotics. They're a substitute, and he was really happy about that. He says, oh, if you don't want narcotics, I won't give them to you. It's not like a codeine, is it? No, uh, the painkiller was tramadol, which is not a narcotic, but it works on your receptors. And the other one was tortol. It's like an ibuprofen. Oh, cool. A super ibuprofen that works really well. But I will say that going for four days without ibuprofen is horseshit. No, we don't want you to bleed all everywhere. Because <laughs> of the blood thinning? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all of that is unrelated. Yeah. But I didn't have a chance to tell you about it. I'm sure everybody cares. <laughs> we got um, sidetracked because I wanted to talk about how nice the lady uh, was at the door. I guess that's the thing. And, and I said it earlier and I was kind of a... Uh, uh, what's the right word? Not Matt. Douchebag. Yeah, I was kind of a douchebag, but it, you're. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 also wrong to be judging people um, willy nilly, and that's that's what I did earlier when I was when I was saying how pe everybody wearing masks is terrified and and living in their own hell or something like that. I know a lot of people are like I said, afraid to be a troublemaker. I don't it's, want to cause any problems. Well kind of should you know it's interesting when you think of like the a lot of the cultures that we come from i'm talking like your scandinavian or your nordic or whatever you you think of like they had to get along there the social social pressure was a real thing simply because if you don't get along with the people around you when winter comes you can't you don't have the unity in a community to survive like someone's starving Someone's not. If they didn't have, if they didn't have the right preparation, if they didn't, if they didn't grow the right crop that year, just because they guessed wrong, if you know, someone's starving. And so you have to, you have to really build together that that unity. There, it, there needs to be a, a conformity in that in that society. And so that is part of some of the some of the cultures that we come from. And so that's why social shame is so useful against uh, against a lot of Americans, is because of like that's that's. You, 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 it's unacceptable to to stick out and to rock the boat because it, it causes real problems for the whole community. I burden myself. It's okay. But it's not. What you looking at? My wife and kid right now. Weirdo. One of my kids. Oh, only one of them? Yeah. You picking favorites now? I picked favorites a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you. <laughs> yes, it's you, whichever child's watching this now. <laughs> so, this, um, the just, just a few days ago, I read Deuteronomy 7 and Doctrine and Covenants 10, both on the same day. And in Deuteronomy 7, let's see if I can find any of the specific scriptures where it says it. Where are you going, dog? So like in 12, it says, wherefore... So Deuteronomy 7, basically here's the gist of what I'm... what The thing that was impressed upon me was in... One of the things that we don't do very good um, in the church and in... In general, it's hard to teach. Is understanding like why God 
would take the Israelites and have them go through and destroy other nations. Like the Israelites were. They, they wreaked havoc after they left Egypt. They, they literally, like God commands them to destroy these people and don't leave any of them alive. Not man, woman, or child. And he says, don't let your children um, take them as wives or husbands. It's like, because they will corrupt your children's families. And he was like, it was, it was very, very brutal. And it was very, like, uh, militaristic and, and nationalist and very, what people would consider, like, wrong nowadays. But he, it goes in, in one of the verses, in 12 and 13, it says, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do that, do them, that, sorry, that if you hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swore, he swore unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will bless thee. He will bless the fruit of, the, of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil and the increase of thine kin and the flocks of thy sheep. In the land which he swore he swear unto thy fathers to give thee, and why was that? It was because he swore it to their fathers. He's, I mean, you think of the promises he made with Abraham. God he blesses those who serve him and who who devote themselves to him. And these people had turned away from him and they had fallen into they they worshipped false gods. They worshipped um, he, he they worshipped um, evil. And because of that, God had the perfect right to go and tell them to go and destroy those people. Well, the thing that, that was so interesting to me is it's very brutal in what it says. Like like the very last verse the, is in 26, it says, Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be cursed, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it. For it is cur- it is a cursed thing, and he's talking about people there. It's like, and it, it's 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 you read that and you think, oh, that's cold-hearted, or oh, that's mean, or oh, that's bad. It's like, no, we have to understand that because when Christ comes and he says, turn the other cheek, it actually means something because when Christ came, it was an eye for an eye, and you have to first understand an eye for an eye. You have to first understand fight and protect your family before you can actually have the the higher law which is love you love God first and and love your your neighbor as yourself and in doctrine and covenants um, 10 there's I, I want to say it's like 46 or 47 there somewhere in the middle he talks about how those people who use the chur- who use churches and use things to get their own gain, they are against him and not of his church. And then 46, or, and then in the very end, he he wraps it up by saying, um, in 68, he says, this is Doctrine and Covenants 10. He said, whosoever declareth more or less than this, the same is not of me, but is against me. Therefore, he is not of my church. And okay, sorry, uh, 67. Behold, this is my doctrine. Whosoever repenteth and cometh and cometh unto me, the same is uh, is my church. And whosoever and, and then he says, whosoever declareth more than or less than this, the same is not of me and is against me. And there was only two things there. It was he didn't he didn't say, oh, who um who goes to church every Sunday. He didn't say who does who who go who calls themselves by this name or who is two things: those who repent and go to him. There are people of God's church, I believe there are people of God's church in all religions, in all faiths. People that sincerely repent and turn their hearts to God. And then there are people who of all faiths who are against him. Those people who try to get gain. Those people who try to um, try to receive their rewards here on earth. Further their own gain. Further their own gain, exactly. But getting back to the whole nations thing, the he talks again in... in in Doctrine and Covenants 10, he talks to um, he talks about how he made promises with the the Nephites and Lamanites, and how their posterity, uh, if they keep the commandments, they will 
inherit this this land. And then he says, any people, na- any nation, any and the way I understand it, like any race, anybody who keeps the commandments of God, if we first turn to God, they will prosper in this land, referring to here in the in the Americas, and and they will be protected from the external forces. And to me, it's just like we need to help our nation, help our country become more moral. Right now, we're celebrating abortion. Right now, we're celebra- we're having parades about gay pride, about homosexuality, about um, transgenderism. We're ha- we're celebrating the different races. We're celebrating different. Um, there's so many evil things that are going on that we just, as a people, we're not being wise and standing up against the, the, the evils that Satan is pushing. And we know how to solve them. There's nothing new under the sun. We first had to solve them in Deuteronomy. We first had to solve them there, and that was, that was hard because the people were not moral. If we can turn our hearts to God, that solves the majority of the problems we have. How often in uh, the scriptures does it say um, whatever is more or less than this cometh of evil? I want to say there's at least like three or four times that it happens. Um, so it happens in the New Testament. It happens. Oh. <laughs> I saw the little red ember and then it touched my cheek and it burned. Oh, stupid fire. <laughs> Don't listen to it, it. I, I don't know. It happened several times, but I don't know how many. A lot. Yeah. It was something that I've noticed. But that's whatever is more or less than this. Not just whatever is less than this or more than this. It goes back to say if it's too good to be true. Yeah. You know? A good um, pulse of what is is God wants you to do is look at the things that you're uncomfortable with, the things that you that make you discomfort like uncomfortable. And I'm referring to and I'm referring to the sins that we have, the the little things that you don't want to work on. That's probably the thing that you need to work on most. And it's just like it, it doesn't it. it Sacrifice is what the Lord requires of us. We need to, like, like it's taught. If if your hand offend thee, cut it off. We need to get rid of the parts of us that are offensive to God. It's all of me. Well, <laughs> like, you've got some good stuff in you too. Somewhere. Gotta be. <laughs> it's it's interesting. The little things that like I remember it said that Satan is always going to take our weaknesses and our sins, and he re- he will reveal them to the world at the most inconvenient time for us. That's referring to like I think that's referring to like adultery, like pornography, like. The, if you're embarrassed by your search history, then you've got something to focus on and get better at. If you're embarrassed by the the way that you interacted in business with a neighbor, then you've got something to work work on, and get a uh, get better. If you're embarrassed that you were afraid to stand up to someone who was doing wrong or evil, if you were afraid to speak the truth, you've got something to work on. These little things, they don't fix themselves. But you don't. You, you're not alone in, in becoming better. God is is always there trying to help us be better. And so, just take courage and, and take little steps to do better. I find the the. Have you heard the of the, of the seven deadly sins? Mm-hmm. I don't rem, I don't know them off the top of my head. And oh, there's there's greed, envy, lust. Um, what? Uh, Wrath. Gluttony. Gluttony. Yeah. There, there are things that we don't teach in our church, in, in the church, like Mormons, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We don't teach them. Um, oh, but you've I, outed us. But the, but I think that there's some really good truths that, that can be learned from them. Because it helps you see 
what the ways that Satan tries to control you. You help it helps you see the chains that he uses to try and and get you to do what's wrong, you know? And it's just like there there's so many different things that Satan tries to do and it's like we don't want to be suckers. We don't want to be fools. Don't let Satan trick you. Yeah, sucker. You gotta hold your little microphone thing. I'm afraid I'm. It's not gonna get you very good. Ooh, can't get me any worse than it has been, like buried in my pocket. Yeah, it can. Oh, I don't think so. Oh shit! You don't watch anyway, so you don't know. I watched like the first three minutes of them. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna watch this. <laughs> Which, if nobody else does, I can't really. Man, you're dirty dog. Can't really blame them. <laughs> My mommy watches, at least she used to. Oh, she still does. I offended her when I said circle jerk. <laughs> I still think I probably You didn't should watch your mouth, I probably Fred. should talk a little bit nicer. You didn't watch your mouth. I'm offended. I called politics a circle jerk. <laughs> It really is. It's like, oh, we're going to do this. It's like, tell the media that we're, look at how good we're helping these kids that can't, don't have food. We're taking money and we're taking someone else's money. It's a look at me and look how, look how charitable and generous I am. Look at what a great, but, magnanimous ruler I am. But they're always generous with your money. Mm -hmm. They're always generous with somebody else's money or time or what have you. And what not. They're not generous with their douchebags. Especially Mitt Romney. <laughs> Did you see that Delta put all those people who were chanting, chanting traitor at them on a no-fly list? Which I thought it was great. Everybody chanting traitor. Yeah, was it Mitt? Yeah. Oh, his, feelings, his feelings must have got hurt. I'm not a traitor. You just don't understand. You don't know what's best for you. Well, let me figure that out, pal. I'm pretty good at trial and error. Mostly error. <laughs> but, and that's, that's the other thing. If we're not allowed... To make mistakes, do we ever truly learn? That's the thing is like we've said it before, but it's such a good and now it's an analogy that we should not forget. And it's not just an analogy. The war that we fought in heaven before this life was all about us having the ability to have agency, to come to Earth, gain a body. And have agency, retain our ability to choose for ourselves. That's Does your the dog make any more gross noises? I encourage it. But the war that we fight today is over that same thing. Are, can you choose for yourself? Can you make a decision for yourself? It's like, oh, can you make a decision in, in your health? Can you make a decision for your uh, for if you want to wear a mask or not? Is what I was referring to. Can you make a decision in how you want to build that house? Can you make a decision in what you want your kids to learn? Can you make a decision in where you want to go? Man can and should govern himself. And remember, not making a choice is making a choice. Freedom is a lifestyle. I like that. You should make a shirt. Oh yeah, Fred made some shirts. I don't remember where he put them. I took them down. Why? Well, I, I have a whole list of different things, and I wanted to go over with you. It, it didn't sound like you were super excited about them. I love t-shirts. I show you all my new t-shirts that I order and get. Dude, I ordered a t-shirt the other day. It's got a big foot footprint on it and then 
It's got, like, in the footprint, there's the background of the woods, and there's Sasquatch walking through. He's got his hand up, flipping flipping the bird, and it says, I hate people. So I bought it. <laughs> I was like, this is great. Oh, after this, I got a, a big list of shirt ideas that I, want to, I wanted to get your opinion on. Will any of you buy shirts? Are they funny? Some of them. Well, if they're funny, I'll buy them. Or, uh, or if they're like belligerent. Some buy, of them are belligerent. I'll buy belligerent shirts. I used to buy a lot of like funny political shirts, and now I found that it's shifted from funny to more of a you know belligerent. Back, yeah, back off. Don't try it. What? It's like you want a flag that says, don't tread on me. Oh. Oh. Hey! <laughs> Did you know those were there? Who put that there? It's an anti-government flag. That's News what the radicals have turned it into. Newsflash. That's how we got this government. <laughs> Welcome to our history. Yep. We were founded on insurrection, sedition... <laughs> Belligerent, belligerentism. Honestly, I, get, I, I don't know. We were belligerent. Founded. That's that's belligerent. the correct way. Yeah. But I want to say belligerentism. We were founded by men who feared God and refused to be ruled. And refused to be ruled. And that's how we fix it. Refuse to be ruled. The government can pass whatever laws now that I they want. Now I gotta add that to the shirts. One second. What? I said another thing earlier that I wanted to. Uh, oh, look at you, the great creator. One of the one of the things is be fruitful and multiply. Don't be fruity and blow a guy. I can't take credit for that. That's old Benjamin saying that I would like um, a lot. Any. <laughs> but that that's. I was going to say, and I'm lucky that I found my train of thought again. Um, shit, there it goes. <laughs> Refuse to be ruled. No, yeah. The government can pass whatever laws that they want, and they're going to do what they're going to do, regardless of what we say. I'm not saying that you shouldn't contact your representatives and make your voice be heard, because you most definitely should. Um, It's part of that exhausting all means at your disposal to avoid violence. But ultimately, they can pass a law, but if nobody's going to follow that law, nobody's going to obey it, and nobody's going to enforce it, what power does that law have? None. Laws only have the power that we give them. Which is, again, having to do with like these, man- these mandates. If you refuse to live them, that's the end of it. That's it. Yeah. If you're a business... Here's something that I'd be interested in. If we had thousands of people... I don't care. If we had people... I, I'm curious to know businesses who have actually been contacted by the health department to be told what to do. I I'm, tell them to go get a warrant. I'm wondering what what businesses has happened to. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, if I owned a, bu- a business and the health department came in, I tell them to go get a warrant. If because if, they don't have any legal authority be, to be there, if the I, health department has no legal authority. Period. It's if, an unelected body. If I knew that a business in my area was struggling because the health department was on them, I would purposely support that business regardless of what I needed to do. I would, even if it was simply just giving a donation so they could fight the battle, I would I would rally around that business. So if you know of any businesses. Let people know, hey, these people are really fighting for freedom. Because business has never been about, like, the, the purpose of business is not to be political. It's to and make a profit. they're not an enforcement pro- art pro- either. Provide a, go- a good or service and make money from that. That's It's, it's commerce. But the, the government is trying to use, leverage that to gain their, to achieve their political ends. And that's, that's tyranny. Yeah. It's also gay gay as AIDS, and that's pretty gay. 
man, either one of us ever run for a political office, all they're going to have to do to smear us is look these things up. You know? And I feel bad for the poor bastard that has to do that. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, they'll look these things up, and it's like... Did you really? Am, am I wrong? Did you really? Am I wrong? <laughs> You, as long as you don't back down, people respect that. Did you really refer to somebody as a faggot? Yeah! yeah. I did, do it all the time! Did you see him? I call my friend he, he didn't put his blinker on. That's faggot! <laughs> Isn't that what you get if all your knickers caught in a wad or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> You're always complaining about something with driving. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the motorized buggy. My bane. Well, not mine. Other people having them is my bane. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to turn right. Okay, so I'm going to try and go around you. Oh, holy shit, let me change my mind. Come back over in the lane. You're so dramatic. Douchebags. You're a baby, Mitch. You are kind of a douche, too. We've established... We've are in this episode, we've already established <laughs> that. It's like, what do you want? I admitted it. We've moved on, but I we have not moved on. You're the one that's living in the past here. <laughs> I've given you loves. Come here, dog. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, you tripping over my wood. Killing my vibe, man. How long have we been doing this now? An hour and four minutes. Dude, the last 20 minutes have gone by so much slower. Yeah. Than the first forty minutes, and I think it's because the sun went behind a cloud. It was um, the sun. Well, we started just these went like five minutes before the video started too. Behind a cloud, I'm so lonesome. I could cry. My favorite gun guy's back. Well, at a particular shop. That made me happy. Well, he's not my favorite, but. Since the other guy quit, he's my favorite. You mean at a shop that you go to? Yeah. A place that you frequent? Yeah. Oh. Transfers I have done by another guy. I have a guy for everything. You've got Pile. Pile. That's how you say it in Romanian when you have connections. Oh, dude. I got Pile. Out the yin yang, man. And they go like this. If that's what it takes to get a deal. It's like you got connections. That. How they say connections? Yeah, Pele. That is not how I understand that. Because <laughs> they do the same thing in Iraq. Oh, yeah? They'll go, what's the Fiki, Fiki. Fiki. <laughs> what? No! <laughs> what does that mean? La Fiki. You know exactly <laughs> what Fiki Fiki means. <laughs> does that mean butt stuff? My Siddiqui. Fiki Fiki. What? 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 <laughs> No! <laughs> I La know. Fiki Fiki! I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure on the interpretation either, but I'm going to assume that it is not on the up and up. <laughs> yeah, this means like you have connections, like you, you get things done. That's what it is in Romanian. Anyway, if that's what I have to do to get connections on guns and ammo, hell yeah, I'll do it. At least that's how I learned it in Constanza. There could be other... I mean, each place has different things and stuff. That's what happens when you have a long history. Constanza is right on the Black Sea. I have a long history <laughs> of douchiness. Okay. Be serious, Fred. <laughs> this is a serious. Oh, uh, people are so serious, doom and gloom these days. Enjoy life. life. Don't do it. It's a trap. It's a trap. There's nothing worse than enjoying, <laughs> except for porn. Porn is worse. All porn's gay porn. You're on to something. <laughs> I'm glad nobody in my family watches these. <laughs> they would probably tell you not to hang out with me anymore. Which is solid advice. I always thought you were a bad person. But now I just know. That's great. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm excited for your T-shirt ideas. Oh, I'll show you. I've got, I got a lot of. I'm not very good with graphics, and so I'm gonna have to learn how to do some stuff. But I've got a lot. There's like. I'm not very good 20. at anything. 
I can shoot and run my mouth. And that's it. Coincidentally, one supports the other. <laughs> oh, you're a good dog. I wonder if anybody listens just to the audio. They would think that I'm talking to you. There is a dog here, like a canine. Dog's name's Roxy. Canana's familiar. This. Which means a familiar wolf. Do you know that? No, but it makes sense. It is Canis Familiars, correct? Something like that, I don't know. I, I know that the technical name means f- Familiar Wolf, and Familius is... And so Canis is probably... I don't know if Canis is the right word, but Familius or something sounds right. Why do we use so much Latin? It's a good question, I would guess, because of the influence of the... Well, the Greeks did too, and so did... Uh... So did the Egyptians. But, I mean, we don't use Latin for those. Do you know where our numbering system came from? Mm. The Middle East. You. <laughs> they were ahead of us on numbers. Speaking of the Middle East, did you know that they just appointed a supporter of the Muslim Brotherhood as the VA secretary? He's not a Muslim himself, but I mean, if you're going to praise the Muslim Brotherhood, I mean, you are what you support. Right? I don't know. The, the thing that's. I so told my wife that, and she's like, they're just trying to push you guys. I'm like, yeah, they are. But that's the thing, is like. Vengeance is God's. Until God tells us. We don't do anything violent until God gives us a, a instruction, or until there's that that rising in that's a, on a core visceral spiritual level. We fix our own house, we fix our own backyard, you fix your own your own home, you get yourself good with God, and then you follow God, and whatever He wants, you do. Whatever He wants, you do. It's that simple, and it's not complicated. That's that's how we win. So we follow God. New toys. <laughs> Gonna take my toys and go home. Yeah. Oh, well, I was wanting to go shooting after this, but I didn't bring any earplugs. I might have some extra earplugs. Do you have extra earplugs? I think so. I know I've got my my muffle, and, and I think I have some internal earplugs as well, the push-in cool. foam ones. Cool. If I had my other set of keys, I'd have some. I haven't had a chance to put anything in there yet. Well, worst comes to worst, I'll just shove some 9mm rounds in my ears. <laughs> You've done that before? Yeah. <laughs> you can use brass or full bullets. I did not know this. Yeah. Done it before. That's why you have problems hearing. Huh? <laughs> I have lots of problems, and hearing's down on the list. But hey, I can kind of walk, so that's cool. Just remember that this, the year 2020, everybody was like, oh, down on 2020. The year 2020 was the year of 2020 vision. People could see what was going on, and they started to understand what what was going on. 2021, I've heard it called the year of blackjack. It's like where the cards fall. It's gonna be it's it's gonna be a interesting year, and. We'll see what happens, what it brings. But don't be discouraged. Don't be sad. Don't be f- afraid. Fear helps no one. Be prepared. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to homosexuality. No, it leads to the dark side. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see, this is probably the this is probably the stuff that I shouldn't do. Your your mom and your wife will get mad at me. 
It's okay. <laughs> They'll use it against you when you run for Congress. <laughs> look at look at this! Look at this! <laughs> do you really do that? Making fun of homosexuals? I make it's fun funny. of funny. I make fun of everybody. <laughs> I well, don't discriminate. I discriminate indiscriminately. If you happen to be on that side, <laughs> that's unfortunate for you. <laughs> that's the thing. Is like we we you silo people, and I I pointed this out. I was. Um, Did you say silo? Yeah, silo. We silo people. You take like someone who's in a group that you're not in, and you put a shield around them because you don't want them to. You give them a certain status of like victimhood or whatever. Then you try to protect them. It takes the natural desire to protect those who can't protect themselves, which is a good desire. It's a, a good thing. And it and it, it um, subverts that because it makes you also think that people are incapable and incompetent. And it makes you um, degrade others. Uh, I noticed that like, when, when I watched the show The Ringer, <laughs> I was with a group of friends. When did we get ice cream? <laughs> I was with a group of friends. I've got a little sister has Down syndrome, right? I was with a group of friends, and they were scared to watch this show. She's with not me. the only one. What? What? Oh. But I was implying that you also have Down syndrome. <laughs> gotcha. Um, well, I so so I have a little sister has Down syndrome. Must run in the family, like Mitch said. <laughs> but she she has been such a good influence in my life. She's she's such a she's an angel. She's an angel here on earth. She's also mischievous. A person and funny, <laughs> and it's like people view her as like this little flower that you can't offend or you can't, you know. And she's not; she's a person. She has her own personality. Get to know her, and the and so we watch the show The Ringer, where this guy pretends to be um, retarded. He pretends to be retarded so he can join the Special Olympics, and his uncle is betting on the Special Olympics so that his business or his house doesn't get <laughs> uh, sold or something. And, and so he's, he's getting his, his nephew to join the Special Olympics and win. And these the, the, the kids, the, the people that are retarded there, the handicapped people, they were like, you're a faker. You talk different. You're a mother faker. You know, and they, 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 they catch him out. And they, they he, he couldn't fool the handicapped people, <laughs> but he that, fools baby. all the other, like, normal people. And it's like they're in on the joke. and they're Little like, Jeffy Dollar yeah. with an O. <laughs> he, he, um... He, te- he, he gets the handicapped people who are good-hearted people. In general, people with handi- with like people with Down syndrome and stuff like that, in general, they're just angels. And so he, oh, yeah. he gets those people, he explains to them what, they're, what he's trying to do, and they're like, we'll help you. And so, and so they're all on this team trying to help this guy's uncle, but it, people get offended because it's like, oh, there's retarded people in that show. And it's like, you're, you're a jackass for not seeing that as a person. It's a person. They have ambitions, hopes, feelings, desires. They have a sense of humor. humor. Yeah. It's like, treat them as a real person. They're not just some porcelain doll that doesn't know anything. They're, they're people. And well, it's just like, you do, we do this with all races. We do this with all genders and uh, sexualities and all that stuff. It's like, no, these are people. We all have a tendency, unless you're like a raging puss, to laugh and joke about our differences and our shortcomings in a lot of ways. Um, because it's different, and that's just what people do. Mm. I didn't... I don't know. But, I mean, that's, that's, I think, a huge problem what's missing from our society is we don't tease and we don't joke anymore because you had a few people who were, what do they call woke... <laughs> you had a few woke people say words really do hurt. What? So my my reply to that is, how does it feel to be so weak that words hurt you? How 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 racist or how um, condescending is it to claim that someone else is so weak that they can't withstand words, that they can't withstand criticism? Oh, you criticize the black people. Oh, you criticize the Jews. Oh, you criticize women. Oh, you criticize gay people. Oh, you, you know criticize... who else I criticize? Myself. So, so stupid. It's, it's Words all... really do hurt. It's all about... Um, 
making it difficult to speak the truth. Well, and the thing is with the people who say that, you know, they, they pull the whole words really do hurt, I have no power to offend you. I really don't. I can say things that people usually, that typi- people typically don't say, but I have no real power to offend you. Offense is a choice. You choose to be offended instead of being like, this guy's an idiot. And or this guy's a jackass. I have no real power over you. The only power that we have is power that people let us assume. So letting somebody offend you, you are granting them power over you. That's what I teach my kids. Is like when you choose to be offended, you're giving that person power. You, the, you that's literally what you're doing is you're giving them power, and it's it's your choice. And we're giving away our ability to to choose. We're giving away our agency. We're giving away our our um our ability to to think and to speak truth and to be sincere and to to even love. Break. Damn it. <laughs> but yeah. So the whole words really do hurt. I don't buy. And I think. If you say that and you honestly believe that, I think you're weak. I really do. The gendered speech that they're pushing. um, If you know anybody who has learned English as a second language, you'll realize how much, how ridiculous, first off, how ridiculous it is as an idea, but also, it's, to speak the, the woke language... Gendered speech is a microaggression against those who don't speak English naturally. A micro, oh my gosh. A micro um, you got to speak to people in the way a that they talk. you got to speak to people in the way that they understand You things. know what I love? What I absolutely love is you have an entire um, side of the political aisle who is saying that people on our side, so I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I don't even consider myself a conservative. I... I'm a constitutionalist. I believe in the Constitution. But they say that the people on our side are a problem and a threat, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Well, you are a problem. Let me tell you something. When my side is a problem and a threat, you're going to freaking know it. And it's going to be because (laughs) you pushed us there. So this whole bullshit of we're a problem, we're a threat, you better pull your head out of your ass before you make it that way. Silence is consent. Silence is consent. Bill Cosby. <laughs> but, no, I, 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 I see and I hear all these things, I'm like, are you, are you for real? Like, if you want to know when I'm a problem, uh, you I'll will let you know. know. I'll let you, you know. You will know when I'm a problem. When you have finally pushed me to the point that I'm a problem, <laughs> it's going to be your own damn fault. That's the thing, is like, there's there's um, Black Pill, Devin Stack, he's a guy who does... Um, oh, when is the next... Noose book come out. I think the, the day of the noose. I think that he might have already written it or started or something. But he got kicked off of Amazon, I believe. He's got he yeah he's he's I I really like his stuff. But he um he does uh he break down he does breakdowns of a lot of different film. He's he's really into uh, propaganda. Porn. No, no. Well, he did talk about there's a a, a movie called The Pawnbroker is when the first time they basically had porn in movies. He broke that down. But, um, anyways, he broke down the book called, or he broke down the movie Office Space. Um, <laughs> something that I sent to you long, long ago. You never watched, I'm sure. Probably not. I'm it's, telling you right now, so if you send me a video, chances of me watching it are usually not that. And then you have the gall to ask me if I watch the videos you send. Gah. Yeah, I'm kind of a hypocrite. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what it is um anyway yeah, that's neither here nor there <laughs> he he broke down office space and he did such a good job at explaining the pro the the culture the white culture that's in there the white american culture and it's like one of the things that he points out is like our people uh nation the the the, the white culture the, the american white culture it doesn't it, it views problems like it it doesn't ignore problems it views like how are you it, it it comes with comes with the most nuclear extreme solution immediately, and it doesn't it, it doesn't act upon it. But it already calculates out. Okay, are we gonna like you take the one guy? I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. And he that was that was one of the very first things he says in the movie. He's my favorite. He's so funny. But 
He's like, um, what what happens is we we don't we don't act on our we're, our our own restraint is what keeps us from being disruptive. Our own restraint, and it's like we're we're not going to cause problems until we have no other options. And once we have no other options, then we cause problems. And it's like that's that's what happened in in 1776. They tried to get the the crown to understand. They tried to get the crown to give them representation, to at least let them have their course of redress. Currently, our government is taking away our forms of redress. They took away the vote. The vote, whether you believe it was illegitimate or not, there's questions about its validity. Is it broken? No, I'm trying to see how much battery you have. Hey! Sweet. I made sure that it was recharging beforehand. But you, but the vote is our single way to to peacefully protest what our government's doing. That's what the vote is for. It's a peaceful protest. Well, if the vote is not valid, if it's not accurate, then that's taking away our peaceful means of, of redress to the government. When the government passes these omnibus bills, whether that's a spending bill... Or whether that's a bill that's passed in seven minutes, like or it's a Bill Cosby, or it's a Bill Cosby, yeah. You stupid. <laughs> Me? Yes, you. Well, Bill Cosby too. But... Hey, we just talked about words hurt the dick. <laughs> words. Ah. <laughs> oh. Anyways. You hurt my feet. Uh, our our ways of of solving problems peacefully. Are, are slowly being taken away from us. And I, I, I am in no way advocating violence. I I am against violence. And I and I will be until I'm not. Until I have no other choice. Exactly. I will I will expend every means at my disposal until my hand is forced. Um like uh, we had the 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 Deuteronomy. No. We had the, the thing where everybody signed their signature for the referendum, the tax referendum. We did that. I ran around and gathered some signatures. Now, granted, some people did a lot better job than I did doing it. But, I mean, I did that. Um, and we still have... We still have some peaceful options. We don't have very many. Um... I mean, the last poll that I saw was 71% of Americans believe that there's going to be a, another civil war. So, when you have anybody, any portion over, what is it, 30-some-odd percent that believe something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Um, but we, that doesn't mean that we just stop and we wait and see what happens. We still have a couple of, a couple of options. We have Article, an Article 5 Convention of States. Um, and that that's one way to rein in the power and and the spending and everything. So we really should be after our state representatives to pass a resolution for a convention of states, which the state of Utah has done. There are 15 states. We need 30, 34. So we need 19 more states to to form. The, a convention of states and our other option is to actually be be active and really deciding who we're going to send to represent us that means we have to participate in primaries we have to do our research and find out who's the best candidate we have to inspire and and push people that we know that would be good solid statesmen and good candidates to run for office those are about the only options that we have left to save this before it goes before it gets violent and that way we can say look you know we did absolutely everything we could in our power to avoid violence and that's not just to tell ourselves it's not just to tell our children and those that we oppose but we're also we're also going to have to tell God that I did everything in my power to avoid it 
turn into violence. Right? Yeah. That's why Fred's running for Congress. I'm running for president. I'll still vote for you. Just not really running for president or Congress. Fred's going to run for Congress. Maybe. I think you should. If we get enough good people to run for things, that's maybe that'd be good. that's exactly what I was just saying. Like I like I said earlier, I've been pushing some of my my veteran friends who know and understand the Constitution that look, we need to be running for office. We need to be running at the local level, the state level, and the federal level because we're, we're out of options. And the the whole the whole voting for you know, Republican or Democrat, because the other side's going to win. I'm voting for the lesser of two evils. That's all I've heard my entire adult life when it comes to an election cycle. Well, we've got to vote for the lesser of two evils. Well, guess what? When you keep voting for the lesser of two evils, evil, evil isn't diminishing. It's allowed to propagate. So it just continually gets worse and worse and worse and worse. The lesser of two evils is still evil. Yeah. That's what I just said. But I didn't say it like that. But I mean, I was I was trying to push my mom to run for for, for uh, a position in the state. I'm like, mom, you should run. See, one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is running first, running for a spot at the county level to become a, a county commissioner, so that we can dissolve the county commission. Which is three people getting paid, you know, how much money a year to make a decision. So we disband that, and I've got a couple of people on board with this idea already. But we we disband the county commission and go to a county council, so the county is better and more accurately represented. The thing that's sad about the way that we've got our and here's here's the thing. Here's the truth, though, Mitch. If the votes, if the voting system and the voting apparatus is corrupt, you can't vote your way to freedom. No, but that doesn't mean that we stop trying. Agreed, agreed, 100%. The, I guess the thing that I'm getting at, though, is, again, and I kind of harp on this a lot, is we have to become more moral as a society. Mm-hmm. We have to live, we have to, like, it's, it's, it's funny how... Um, Whenever you look at people who are fighting for freedom of speech and stuff, a lot of times the things that they're fighting for is the freedom to say bad things or the freedom freedom to, to be degenerate. Instead of fighting for I'm freedom. a degenerate. What? I'm a degenerate. Yeah. That's point point exactly. Exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> I don't even know what I was I, – I guess what I was going at is like we need to – People aren't pushing for the freedom for, for a moral reason. They're pushing to expand freedom to do this but restrict this, which is right. Yes, exactly. Get away from me. Your nose is wet. Come here, dog. I'm kind of grouchy. He is. He's a, he's a, he's a grouchy person. I like dogs, and I like to pet dogs, but I don't want you in my space all the time. He doesn't understand. He's a bad man. <laughs> yeah, well, that's arguable. <laughs> to your point. <laughs> but, yeah. But the, it, it's harder to corrupt the elections at the local level. Well, it's not. But the focus isn't there. It has right been now. lately. You look at how China's been involved in, not just China, but like how big, big money has been involved in like judges and stuff in, at the state levels and at yeah. the lo- local levels. It's, it's, but we still have the power to stop that. Exactly. And that's why we should be finding the people to best represent us with good values who are interested in actually being statesmen. People who don't want to play the games, people who have no no desire to fit in with those people, people who aren't afraid to 
to hang their colleagues a bird. And just say, but, look, we are a consequence of your actions. People who aren't afraid to speak the truth when it's unpopular. Well, we may not win. If you're up for office, you may not win. <laughs> Especially, you know, because there's so much money and so much power and everything involved with it. No. But if it's God's intent and it's God's will, it's going to happen. Here's, here's the thing. It always has been and it always will be that whenever you align yourself to God you're joining the winning side. He's One plus infinity is still infinity. So if you just align yourself with God, it's it's going to work out. might not be in your lifetime, might not be in your, your, in your time frame or your time scale, but it will work out. Things may not always be comfortable, and things may get real ugly and real bad. But in the end, we know that truth and justice prevail. We know that freedom isn't freedom isn't going to disappear from the earth because we have to have freedom to have the gospel, and the gospel is not disappearing off the earth, earth again. So, I mean, we, <laughs> the story's already been written. We know the ending. Like I said, it doesn't mean that it's going to be all lollipops and rainbows. But we know. <coughs> <laughs> but that doesn't give us an excuse to be passive. Utah should be an example to the rest of the country, but the only example we're setting is that we're that our state is just as corrupt, and a lot of a lot of bad principles and examples are being set set here in our state legislature. Why did Utah get the most uh, money? Of coronavirus relief from all the other states because they manipulated data and they're they're just manipulative. We're turning into California. We just don't realize it. Yeah, cool. We're about to pass a constitutional carry bill. Cool. They're also trying to tax us to death. Whether you want to admit it or not, personal finances have a lot to do with our individual freedom. The more money you have, the more things that you can do. I mean, it's it's not everything, but it's a but it, it's a big part of it. It's a big it's it's a, it's a big um, chunk of that foundation. Yeah. If you are not able to um, provide for your family, if you are not able to uh, support your family, then you're you're a slave to the system. Mm -hmm. And that's how we be free is by stop needing everything that they have and also stop being slaves to our passions. I love guns. I'm kind of a slave to guns. Stop it. No. I yeah. love them. I can stop anytime I want. See, look, there's one right there. I'm not even touching it. You, you may have heard of a crack whore. I'm a gun whore. <laughs> tell you, I'd do some nasty, dirty shit for some ammo right now. <laughs> what? Uh, I was just going to point out that you don't need the ammo to do that stuff. But... <laughs> You're a nasty, dirty person anyway. Like, you're a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Over here. For what? It's 
still recording. I know. Talk. About what? About what? I can't go on a rant like you do. I don't have a topic. Oh. So, it is... We're still in the first week of January. Dick. We're still in the, er, the first week of February. Um, if you happen to be looking for for uh, rifles and ammunition of any kind at this particular point in time, if you're just starting out, getting started, um, one of the things that I've still had luck finding is um, 7.62 by 39 ammo, which is what runs in your AKs and your SKSs. And it's running about 50 cents a round, so it's about half about half of what your 223 or 556 is running, because a lot of people are spending a dollar a round on that stuff right now. Um, one of the companies that I just bought an AK from was Palmetto State Armory, and they usually post stuff up every day. They don't do a back order. Um, your deal, your local dealer can order from them, but it's easier to just order straight from them yourselves. They usually post their their inventory between one and two thirty. You kind of have to stock the page, but you can get on there and you can get it ordered. Um, they're kind of expensive, but you can still find them. The ammo you can still find for you know relatively affordable. That's why I kind of decided to get back in the AK game. So, if you're looking. Do you do you have a preference between AK and like your two two threes? Um, I'm more I'm more competent on on an AR. I I can run them better and faster, but I've never really dedicated myself to the dedicated the time and the effort to mastering the AK. I can run an AK pretty good. I mean, compared to a lot of people. But, uh, I mean, it's still a very valuable, very useful tool. Um, I, I'm just better with my ARs because I had the time behind them. For someone who's just getting into the, um, into guns, what, what advice do you say if they're trying to decide what type of gun to get for a rifle? Not right now. Get what you can get. That's, really, it's just doing what you can get? (laughs) Yeah. Um, it's what you can get, and that's why, like, in a time like this right now, I am suggesting getting into an AK, because, like I said, the ammo's half the price. It's not hard to find. You still have to look for it. You can find it online pretty easily, though. But 50 cents a round, as opposed to a dollar a round, it's better. Because, I mean, what good is a gun that you can't get ammo for, or afford to shoot... Have you been able to find nine? Uh, it's out there, but it's way overpriced right now. It's kind of hard, kind of hard to get. It's like two twenty three, but I mean, you can find it. You're gonna pay for it though, which is why you should have been in this game a while ago. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Uh, but uh, if you don't. If you don't have a pistol, if you don't have a gun, I would suggest buying a rifle first. Rifle always trumps pistol. Problem is, you can't really carry a pistol, a rifle like you do a pistol. I've seen some guys carry some in some pretty cool ukulele cases and stuff like that. Well, yeah, you could. It, 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 legit, like one of my buddies, he showed me, and he had it. Uh, his it was an AR-15, but. It was in this small little ukulele case, and it fit just perfect. It was so, it was great. You had the stock pushed in and everything, but yeah, what you can get is far superior to what you can't get. And right now, it just happens to be well, AK ammo is always cheap. Why? Because it's usually steel case and it's imported. It's just cheap. Cheap, cheap. Like, I think you could buy a thousand rounds of 7.62 by 39 before all this. I think you could buy a thousand rounds for about 275. Mm-hmm. So you were paying 
what, roughly 25, 25 cents a round, cents a round as opposed to 30 to 40 cents a round for 223. <coughs> now you're paying right around 50 cents a round, but you can still get a thousand rounds of 762 by 39 for less than 500 bucks. Nice. So, how do you encourage people to get um, competent? Spend the money and invest the time in going to the range and learning how to use it. Plus, you can always do dry fire. You can do dry fire in your home. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that there's no ammo anywhere in the room. <laughs> but I mean, you can you can practice your magazine changes, um, manipulating the safety up drills is what they're called. Rifle comes up, safety goes off, rifle goes down, safety comes on. Getting to know your trigger. That was interesting for me, the up drills. It was, it was just getting used to it. It's just muscle memory. That's all it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Reprogramming. Yep. So to speak. But I do a lot of dry fire. I do a lot of mag changes and manipulation drills in my living room since... I've had so much time off of work lately because I'm a cripple. But find something. At this point, find what you can find. Like I said, stock Palmetto's webpage, and they usually have their AKs up there. Uh, like I said, between 1 and 2.30, 3.00. You can find it. If you don't have it, find one, get one. Sell your cloak and buy one. Mm -hmm. That's a Jesus reference. That it is. Oh, no. Um, so... How far in are we? Like an hour and 40 minutes, I think. Hour and forty minutes. We haven't done the Constitution for a while. Yeah. We're on Article Three, and we're almost done with it. Let's get it done. Want to pound the rest of it out tonight? The Constitution? Yeah. You're thinking not doing the um, amendments yet? No, the amendments will be next. Oh, look, there's it. a picture of George Washington. Okay. Article 3. Section 1. I'll start? Sure. The, the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court, and in such inferior courts as the Congress may t from time to time ordain and establish. The judges both of the Supreme and inferior courts shall hold their offices during good be behavior and shall at stated times receive for their services a compensation which shall not be diminished during the con continuance in office during their continuance in office S section 2 the judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under the constitutional uh, under the constitution the laws of the united states and treaties made or which shall be made under their authority to all cases affecting ambassadors other public ministers and count and consuls to all cases of admir admiralty and maritime judicial ju jurisdiction to um, controversies to which the United States shall be party to controversies between two or more states between a state and citizens or another state between citizens of different states between citizens of the same state claiming land under grants 
of different states, and between a state or the citizens thereof and the, and foreign states, citizens or subjects. So basically what that's saying is it's, it's establishing that, from what I understand it, it's establishing that the the um, the court, the higher court, what is it called? The Supreme Court. Supreme court um, its purpose is to uh, um, judiciate between different states, between citizens and other states, and, and, or, the, and or the same state, or yeah, or the same state. Like all that list of of, of those judiciation of those um, couplings is what the Supreme Court is is designed to do. The Supreme Court is not supposed to make laws. The Supreme Court's not supposed to do a lot of things which they do now. But our sole faith is not supposed to be placed in the courts either. It was very interesting, and I think it was the Tenth Amendment Society that did the um, Madison versus the uh, Supreme Court. Is that what it was? Madison versus Marbury? Madison versus Marbury. And um, it was interesting to understand that before that time, the Supreme Court was considered like a We'll t- we'll t- uh, it wasn't like, oh, we're going to they, – they have the authority over the lesser courts. It was when the lesser courts have a question, they ask their opinion and then take that into consideration. And even in their in their wording of their um, of their edicts or I don't know, their, their declarations is – it is our opinion type of a thing. And it's not necessarily – this is yeah, how – this the, is – The courts aren't the end-all, be-all exactly, of the Constitution. Exactly. Exactly. And it was so interesting. But this isn't Madsen versus Marbury, right? But it was, it was also interesting how in that in that podcast that you had sent me, but from the Tenth Amendment uh, the organization, Tenth Amendment Center. Yeah, the Tenth Amendment Center. They talked. They're on about, Facebook. You should check them out if you're on Facebook. They talked about how um, they talked about how when the courts came up with a oh this is how we're judging, and I think Jefferson was the president at the time, and he was like that I. The way I understand the Constitution, I disagree, and so I'm not going to enforce. And I'm I'm going to use my judiciary um, role to not enforce that judgment. And he, um, do you know what I'm saying? Do you mm-hmm. remember what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I thought it was interesting because of that balance of powers. It it takes multiple perf- multiple people, multiple groupings of people, multiple groupings of power to make a choice, so that the choice is the right choice. And and that's the that's the beauty of it is like. It's it's harder to corrupt multiple people than just one person. Right now, when everybody's corrupt, it, it's it doesn't work the way as the way it's intended, and that's why we need to become less corrupt as a society. Okay, you you read. I'm I'm crying. It's the smoke. It's, it's not, not the smoke. me. It's the smoke. It's not the smoke. <laughs> uh, in all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls. And those in which a state shall be party, the Supreme Court shall have original jurisdiction. In all the other cases before mentioned, the Supreme Court shall have appellate appellate jurisdiction, both as to law and fact, with such exceptions and under such regulations as the Congress shall make. The trial of all crimes, except in cases of impeachment, shall be by jury, and such trial shall be held in the state where the said crime shall have been committed. But when not committed within any state, the trial shall be at such place or places as the Congress shall by law have directed. Ooh, Section 3 is good. Treason against the United States. Dick. You want to read it? Go yeah, ahead. Ahead. I wanted to. Treason I, is my Read! Favorite. Wiener. Treason against the United States shall consist only in levying war against them, or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. No person shall be convicted of treason unless on the testimony of two witnesses to the same overt act, or on confession in open court. The Congress shall have the power to declare the punishment of treason, but no attainder of treason shall work corruption of blood or fur forfeiture except during the life of the person attained which means don't pass it down yeah your your posterity won't fight pay for for your sins your sins it goes back to 
Adam's transgressions. And also settling old scores. Yeah. Article 4. Section 1. Do you want to go over anything else in there? No. It was really good. I don't think so. Section 1. Full faith and credit and credit shall be given in each state to public acts rec- to the public acts records and judicial process- proceedings of every other state and the congress may by general law prescribe the manner in which such acts rec- records and proceedings shall be pro- proved and the eff- and the effects thereof this is one of the reasons why when the state capitol is is closed by armed guard to the public it's such a problem section 2 the citizens of each state shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of citizens in the several states. A person charged in any state with treason, felony, or other crime who shall flee from justice and be found in another state shall on demand of the executive authority of the state from which he fled be delivered by to be removed, be delivered up to be removed to the state having jurisdiction of the crime. No person held to service or labor in one state under the laws thereof, escaping into another shall, in consequence of any law or regulation therein, be discharged from such service or labor, but shall be delivered up on claim of the party of whom such service or labor may be due. <coughs> One of the things that I wanted to point out, this is a problem that we're having with such corrupt judges. You look at like the Kyle Rittenhouse case and stuff like that. You know who that is, right? That poor kid. God. But you, you have these judges who are going out of their way to prosecute people that, 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 that are politically convenient. And activist judges. Activist judges, yeah. And it's 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 going to lead to really big problems. It's going to lead to. Re- I mean, it already is leading to really big problems. You look at you look at the police officers who I think in Portland there was like seventy or eighty people who were um, who the police had detained that were rioting during those riots, and the the. Um, what do you call him? Attorney General or whatever in in that state? Mm-hmm. Is that is that an is Attorney General for a state level as well? Mm-hmm. The Attorney General of Oregon or or I don't remember if it was Seattle or or if it was Seattle or Portland, but the Attorney General there was like, oh, we're not going to prosecute any of these guys, and they walked free. And these are people who had been rioting and and just doing these awful things because it was politically on the Speedy. right side of it was, it was it was politically on the side that they wanted it to be on, so they just let them go. And, it's, and you've had judges that have go out and declare that they're going to fight against anybody who they consider uh, activists, uh, like Second Amendment activists. They consider uh, anybody that, uh, again, the white supremacists, which doesn't mean anything to them. It's just the people that it's, they're just brown shirts. They're just people that are um, they're they're that are getting in the way of them having this color revolution that they're trying to to enact. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. Did you hear about the color revolution that's tried that was that's being tried in Russia right now? No. It's not going well. Putin's not having any of that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Section three. New states may be admitted by the Congress into this union. But new, no new state shall be formed or erected within the jurisdiction of any other state, nor any state be formed by the junction of two or more states or parts of states without the consent of the legislatures of the states concerned as well as of the Congress. The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States, and nothing in this Constitution shall be so construed as to prejudice 
any claims of the United States or of any particular state. Section 4. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government, and shall protect each of them against invasion, and on application of the legislature or of the executive, when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. We, we had a long discussion earlier before we started filming about what a republic means. And the way that the, the way that I understand it is a republic is a form of government in which there are laws and everybody is beholden to the law. And a, a, a democratically elected republic like we have means that we go through a democratic process, we vote for the people who are represent who represent us and our representatives make the laws and everybody is beholden to the law democracy is not what we have we have a republic which means everybody has to follow the law that's why when you have laws being subverted and laws being broken for the case of for the cause of hedge funds or for the cause of voting the the, the laws that were broken to um, to get the voting to be the way that it was in these different states, it, it shows that we don't we don't live in a republic. At least it's not being act, enacted. It's not being treated as a republic. It's being treated as a authoritarian. I don't know the right terms. Maybe dictatorship. I don't know. But it's 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 betraying this document. It's betraying this constitution, which we hold sacred. A republic is one is a government in which everybody, regardless of who you are, has to obey the law. As long as that law is constitutional. If the law is not unconstitutional, if the law is unconstitutional, then it has no power, it has no effect. In the case of Madison versus Marbury in 1804, it says any laws that are repugnant to the Constitution are null and void. And that's, that's the beauty of the Republican form of government. The 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 only function of our government, really, at the federal level, is to protect the rights of the individual. We don't have to justify why something, why we should be able to do something. They have to justify why we should be regulated. The Constitution has to be the highest law of the land. Yeah, the Constitution is the law of the land, or it isn't. There's no middle ground for it. It's not, you know, it's the law of the land when it's convenient, and it's not when we don't like what it says or what it does. So in the case of the governor saying... <coughs> in the case of the governor saying you have to wear a mask, this is the law, uh, they can't. And people love to argue, well, they've passed laws that give them emergency powers. Those laws are unconstitutional. And if it's unconstitutional, it has no power. It's null and void. The Constitution's the supreme law of the land, or it's not. You can't pick and choose. And then when you do pick for it to be the corrupt, bastardized version that they try and sell us, don't come crying to us when they turn around and use it to silence you those people who think that they're going to lawyer their way in, they're going to bible lawyer their way into heaven are the same people i mean maybe this is a generalization but the, the same concept when you try and use the rules to be like oh it says that that's that this is to so and so group so that's not to me so i don't have to follow this rule and it's like no that's that's not what God's saying. Like you, you're 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 making assumptions about what God wants you to do, and you're trying to get out of being doing your duty. It's the same thing with with the with the Constitution. It's like, oh, because the Constitution says here, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it in this way so that it fits into the narrative, and so it makes it so that I so I've given myself power. It's like, no, the Constitution's pretty encompassing. Well, and you can't interpret it the way you want either. You have to interpret it in the way that it was intended. As in, a bunch of dudes who refuse to be ruled saying, no, we're not doing that. Let's finish this. Article 5? Yep. 
Article 5. The Congress, whenever two-thirds of, bo of both houses shall deem it necessary, shall propose amendments to the Constitution or on the application of the legislature of two-thirds of, of the several states shall call a, a convention for proposing amendments, which in either case shall be valid to all intended intents and purposes as part of this Constitution, when ratified by the legislature of three-fourths of, of the several states, or by convention in three fourths thereof, as the one of the uh, as the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by the Congress, provided that no amendment which may be made prior to the, to the year one thousand eight hundred and eight shall in any manner affect the first and fourth clauses in the ninth section of the first article and that no state without its consent shall be deprived of its equal suffrage in the senate you gotta go I'm, I'm crying again so that's where we get the the convention of states and this is the the genius of the founders and of this document is saying look if the federal government gets out of control somehow, which we've allowed, the states can get together and they can propose amendments to the Constitution, such as term limits, a balanced budget, safeguarding and protecting the rights that we already have that they kind of ignore and look past, such as the Second Amendment. So, Article 5 is genius in in protecting the states and individual liberty because they knew that eventually it was going to become a self-serving machine and we have the power to stop it but we have to not be lazy we have to contact our state representatives and get them to pass a resolution for a convention of states and we have to talk to our friends in other states and get them activated and get them mobilized to get their friends and them to get their states to pass it. I don't know anybody that I've ever talked to who isn't in favor of term limits. We as a people need to rise. We need to rise to the occasion. <laughs> oh, there's rising. Yeah. Article 6. All debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all tra treaties made, or which shall be made, under the, the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land. And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the, con to the contrary notwithstanding. The senators and representatives before mentioned and the members of the several state legislatures and all executive and judicial officers both of the United States and of the several states shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution. But no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm still crying. Article 7. The ratification of the conventions of nine states shall be sufficient for the establishment of this constitution between the states, so ratifying the same, done in convention by the unanimous consent of the states present the 17th day of September in the year of our Lord, 1787, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 12th in witness 
thereof we have hereunto subscribed our names. Signers of the Constitution. G. Washington, presiding and deputy from Virginia. New Hampshire. John Langdon, Nicholas Gilman. Massachusetts. Nathaniel Gorham, Rufus King. Connecticut. W. M. Samuel Johnson, Roger Sherman. New York. Alexander Hamilton, New Jersey. Will Livingston, Dave Brearley, W. M. Patterson, Jonah Dayton, Pennsylvania, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Mifflin, Robert Morris, Geo Clymer, I'm guessing that's Thomas Fitzsimmons, Jared Ingersoll, James Wilson, Gov Morris, Delaware, Geo Reed, Gunning Bedford Jr., John Dickinson, Richard Bassett, Jaco Broom, Maryland, James McHenry, Dan of St. Thomas Jennifer, Daniel Carroll, Virginia, John Blair, James Madison Jr., North Carolina, William Blount, Richard Dobbs Spate, Hugh Williamson, South Carolina, J. Rutledge, Charles Coatsworth Pickney, Charles Pickney, Pierce Butler, Georgia, William Few, Abraham Baldwin, attest William Jackson, Secretary. Amen. Oh, there's more. In convention, Monday, September 17, 1787. Present, the states of New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maryland, Miss, Miss, oh, sorry, Connecticut, Mr. Hamilton from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Resolved that the preceding Constitution be laid before the United States and Congress assembled, and that it is the opinion of this convention that it should afterwards be submitted to the Convention of Delegates, chosen in each state by the people thereof, under the recommendation of its legislature, and... Sorry, excuse me, for their assent and ratification, and that each convention assenting to and ratifying the same should give notice thereof to the United States in Congress assembled. Resolved that it is the opinion of this convention that as soon as the convention of nine states shall have ratified this Constitution, the United States in Congress assembled should fix a day on which electors should be appointed by the states which shall have ratified the same and a day on which the electors should assemble to vote for the president, and the time and place for commencing proceedings under this Constitution. That after such publication, the electors should be appointed, and the senators and representatives elected, that the electors should meet on the day fixed for the election of the president, and should transmit their votes certified, signed, sealed, and directed, as the Constitution requires, to the Secretary of the United States in Congress assembled, that the senators and representatives should convene at the time and place assigned, that the senators should appoint the president of the Senate for the sole purpose of receiving opening and counting the votes for president, and that after he shall be chosen, the Congress together with the president should, without delay, proceed to execute this Constitution. By the united, by the unanimous order of the convention, G. Washington, President, W. Jackson, Secretary. Genius. The thing that I was, we were talking about earlier is how difficult it must have been to get a grouping of men together, free-thinking men, independent men, and agree to anything. <laughs> it was hard. Yeah. If you ever studied the, the convention and what it took, the, the entire Constitution um, was compromise, and it almost it almost failed, but it didn't. They got they got the states that they needed <coughs> to ratify it. I mean. We're the country that almost never was. And you look at the, the way that the uh, bunch of 
country bumpkins took on the world's greatest army, uh, the, the world's greatest military force. And they won. God was in that. God was in the Constitution, in the ratification of it, in the creating of it. The only way that it could have worked is through God's hand. And I do not believe that God wants this Constitution to fail. I do not believe that he is going to give up on those that are faithful to him. We as a nation, as a country, we have lost our our ties to him. And as we, as we put him as a priority, as we put God as a priority in our lives, it shores up our constitution. It shores up our, our, our very way of living. Stop, stop being subject to your your passion. Stop being subject to debt, to um, sexual deviance. Stop being subject to wrath and anger, to hate. Stop being subject to fear. Don't be subject to gluttony. To the the yeah, that's so. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm but, sorry. I can help it. No, you're right. <laughs> But those those things that we do, they those 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 strings that tie us down, are the strings of sin, and that's that's really what is what is keeping us slaves. They say the truth will set you free. Well, God is the truth. God will set you free. Sin always binds you, and that that. As a, as a society has cascading effects. And so it's important and imperative for us to stand up for what's right and to encourage those and reward those who do the same. If your neighbor is fighting a legal battle that is unjust, if they've got a business and they're being sued, or what, I don't know, what, being penalized from the health department. An unelected body. An unelected body. Do what you can to help them out. We, there, there's, a, there's a saying that I love that's from Romanian that, that is, from gift to gift, heaven is formed. And that's how it is. We, we, we stand together in God, in unity. It doesn't matter what religion you're from. It doesn't matter what faith you have and, and which books you read from. It doesn't matter what name you put in the, what name is on the building of the church that you go to. If someone fears God, love them for that. Encourage that. If someone encourages others to disobey God or to be degenerate or to be um, captive to sin, shame that. Avoid that. Leave that away. Don't have wrath. Don't have anger. Don't hate people that are doing wrong things. Simply don't engage. The, the power of stepping away from from these these sins cannot be overemphasized. If you believe in freedom, you believe in freedom for all men. That's all men. Freedom is not always easy, and it's not always convenient. And the thing about that, though, is also... You you believe in freedom for all men, but if someone else does not have that same ideal, then they then they are working against you. Then, like in Deuteronomy 7, cut them out of your, your society. That sounds malicious. <laughs> Don't do business with people that, that are trying to subvert your way of living. It's Like I said to Mitch earlier, I don't know if we were on the podcast or not, but I said, like, it's better to pay $5 or $6 for a gallon of milk from a, from a, a dairy that's close to you than it is to pay three $2 from Walmart, because that goes straight to... To, that's that goes straight to organizations that are fighting against you. Most large businesses, most large businesses, most large anything that's getting too big has is is the beast, is the belly of the beast. We have to be united in our love and our desire for for freedom, for that individual liberty. And not just for the parts of freedom and liberty that we value, 
but all of it. The freedom and liberty to voice your own opinion, to believe as you choose, to own your own property, to be able to choose what what weapons you deem are necessary for your status of independence, how you deem best to heat your own house. I mean, freedom and liberty, it's an all-encompassing thing. Burn yourself, stupid. She's cold. Come here, girl. <laughs> it's that short hair. But you know, we're, we're all in this fight together. Let's, while we can, let's do everything in our power to restore that freedom, that individual liberty, peacefully. And until we're forced, until we have to do it by force, which hopefully we don't have to. But if that's what it comes down to, then that's what we have to do. We have a huge obligation to ensure that these freedoms and these principles are passed down to our posterity. And like in Alma chapter 60, if we allow these things, if we allow freedom to die, the sort of justice doth hang over you. Alma chapter 60 was just as much to us as it was to Pahorn. If we allow freedom to die, we're going to be held responsible for that, just as much as those who destroyed it. And that's the thing that I find the most interesting, is you can you can take the comfortable parts of the gospel and find excuses for inaction. Find excuses for, oh, turn the other cheek, that means I'm never supposed to, to fight. You can find excuses, but... When it's all said and done, if you're not following God, we'll get we'll get to that last day, and he'll ask us, "Who are you?" Because you weren't with me. Well, you know, we we always talk about the turn the other cheek. We always hear about turn the other cheek, but we forget the other the other part of that. He doesn't say to always just turn the other cheek. When it, what does it say? When it becomes an offense to your children, that's when you get involved. I don't remember. I'll have to reread that. Well, there's there's one interpretation. I don't know the exact correct intent. It's in D and C somewhere. Let me see if it's in 98. You you go off on a tangent for a minute. Well, there's one in, there's one interpretation that I've heard that I thought was really interesting, and the idea was turn the other cheek. But in and I don't know the laws, the Roman laws too well. But I guess if someone were to strike you and strike you again, that would be that would be regress. That would be they would have regret. You you would be able to take them to basically to put them in jail for it. And so it's like so the interpretation is letting letting someone harm you is not like oh it's good to let people harm you. It's like do what you have to do to let them hurt themselves from their own actions so dnc 98 verse 23 to we'll find the end of it now i speak unto you concerning your families if men will smite you or your families once and ye bear it patiently and revile not against them neither seek revenge ye shall be rewarded but if ye bear it not patiently it shall be accounted unto you as being meted out as a just measure unto you. And again, if your enemy shall smite you the second time, and you revile not against your enemy, and bear it patiently, your reward, reward shall be an hundredfold. And again, if, you sh if he shall smite you the third time, and you bear it patiently, your reward shall be doubled unto, your fourfold, unto you fourfold. And these three testimonies shall stand against your enemy if he repent not and shall not be blotted out 
And now, verily, I say unto you, if that enemy shall escape my vengeance, that he be not brought into judgment before me, then ye shall see to it that ye warn him in my name that he come no more upon you, neither upon your family, even your children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. And then, if, she, if he shall come upon you, or your children, or your children's children, unto the third and fourth generation, I have delivered thine enemy into thine hands. And then, if thou wilt spare him, thou shalt be rewarded for thy righteousness, and also for thy children, and thy children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. Nevertheless, thy, thine enemy is in thine hands, and if thou rewardst him according to his works, thou art justified. If he has sought thy life, and thy life is endangered by him, damn fingers, and thy life is endangered by him, thine enemy is in thine hands, and thou art justified. Art, thou art justified. Where is that document coming in 98? DC 98. Gosh, damn it! Uh, 23 to 31. That's awesome. Thank you. But what does that say? Yeah, turn the other cheek and you'll be blessed, but he's saying the decision's yours, you're justified. Eventually there comes a time where it's the time to fight. Mm -hmm. Or it's the time to... It's to the time to if they escape my vengeance and my justice. Yeah. Which kind of seems like where we're getting to. But, I mean, the time is not... The time is not right now. We still, like I've been saying this whole time, we still have options. We still have things that we can do <coughs> to avoid that. And if we can avoid violence at all possible, that's what we should do. But, but like you said, we're getting the, to the time that our hands are beginning to be tied. Like you said from the very first episode, if there's going to be a fight, you'd rather fight it yourself than pass it on to your kids. Mm -hmm. Such as what our previous generations have put to us through their negligence. And well, I mean, we're we're guilty as well, but their negligence, or the previous generation's negligence and complacency. Hubris. That put us here. Yeah. I love my grandpa, my grandma, but they were complicit. Look where we are now. And look how fast the dominoes are starting to fall. Yeah. They're only going to fall faster. Do what's right and do what's good. Don't let the dominoes fall on you. The way that you do that is you you crush. You you go out and start a garden. Go out and get a get a firearm. Go out and start growing your own your own food and finding ways to be useful. That like there was there was a case uh, I heard a story of a guy that he was called over to he he prepared he prepare, uh, repaired power lines or power, uh, you know, and his crew was called out to go back east to repair these power lines. And like, you're going to have to wear a mask wherever you go. And like, anytime you're working in company stuff, and he's like, fine, I'm going home. I'm not going to do it. And on his way home... You they, don't tell me that you need me and then yeah, tell on, me how on, I'm going to do on it. On his way home, they called him and they're like, hey, uh, can you go to Idaho and, and do this? And so they send him to another place and he didn't wear... He's like, okay. And he didn't, he's like, same thing, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to, I'm not your puppet, but because he's needed, because he was essential, he, um, the, they, they put him up in this, in these nice hotels, they, him and his whole crew, the, the people there were like, buying that, they were so grateful for him, and they, they were just preparing power because of these windstorms, and it's like, learn how to do things yourself, learn how to be self-sufficient, and, and be, do things that people need. And that gives you the power and the authority, not authority, it gives you the power and leverage to live freely. When someone needs you, they don't tell you what to do.
you don't have to give your services, your expertise, your knowledge to somebody else. Nobody can make you do it. Yeah, you may pay a price financially or you know, socially or whatever. You may have to pay a price. But you don't owe your services, your skills, to anybody. Nobody can force you. But just know that you might be viewed as the asshole. And that's fine. That's how you defend I've been an freedom. asshole for a long time. Oh, but don't yeah, bother but me. <laughs> that's for totally different reasons. <laughs> I have some skills. <laughs> okay. I think we close this off? Yep. God bless everybody. You should find something better to do with your time. <laughs> if you're here, <laughs> you've got. You need to go out and make more real life friends. <laughs> well, I'm not your friend. No. This has been episode uh, twenty. Uh, twenty two. Nineteen. Nineteen. We do. We do appreciate that. We we appreciate people who. Stand for freedom, who desire freedom, and who, who, who that, that, that cause rings true in their hearts. Be free. Do good. No one can have your freedom if you don't give it to them.